Okay, let's move uh, along here with our look at Dreamweaver CS3. In this video tutorial, we're going to learn how to insert images into web pages using Dreamweaver. What you're going to find out is that there are several different ways you can insert images into Dreamweaver. And, uh, and we're also going to look at how we can position images. And we're going to look at the different image types that you can insert into web pages. So let's let's start with that. Now I've popped open. No, well, I'm in the uh, just a Windows file system here, so I could show you a preview of the images that I'm going to insert into our pages. Now I want to point out a few things. First of all, I want you to notice that we have an image which is a oh, reading man dot PNG. This is a PNG image. This is a JPEG image. JPG is short for JPEG. And this is a GIF. Some people call it a GIF or GIF image. So the first thing that we got to learn from this is that there are three different image types that you can insert into a web page. PNG, JPEG, GIF. And so the first question that comes to mind is why do you need three different image types to insert into web pages. What's the, what's the point? I'm not going to get into a big history of it, but a lot of these things like GIF and PNG and JPEG, there wasn't some grand master plan by the uh, early nerds in web design. It was just a question of different groups of people seeing a need for a different type of image for web pages. So, these types were created. So let's get into it. GIF is, uh, well, you know, I'm not going to give you the history, but let me just say this. There are different times when you want to use a GIF, a JPEG, or a PNG. And um, I'll quickly just cover that here, although I have, I'm going to have a separate video on images and web pages. But essentially, GIFs are great for images, have very few colors, like you see, it has very few colors. And it's uh, and has uh, basic transparency. You see, it's semi-transparent. You can actually see a little white outline here, which is the transparency limit of this image. Uh, whereas JPEG is another image type. It doesn't have transparency. You see, it's a, it's a solid square. JPEGs basically are uh, it's a file format, and you you can think of a file format as a way of just uh, packaging up an image or packaging up image information. So the JPEG file format is really best suited for images that have lots of uh, shifting colors. You know how there's tons and tons of different colors when you go from the orange to the red and back to the orange. And because the color is not really that solid, JPEG compresses these really well. So the images will get, can be quite small but still look good. Now you could use a GIF format for this particular image here, but the resulting compression, because of the way G GIF works, or GIF, 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 or GIF, the way that the the uh, this file format works, the GIF file format works, it wouldn't do as good a job as JPEG when it comes to these type of photographs where you got all kinds of uh, gradation in terms of uh, your colors. Whereas GIF is much better at compressing solid colors like this. It's better than JPEG is. So if you have like text, logos, that kind of stuff that are solid in color, it's better to use a GIF. If you got photographs, natural pictures, it's better to use JPEGs. For instance, in this website here, on this page, you notice like this button here, this is a GIF because you see it's a solid orange and white. Whereas down here, because we have a photograph of my uh, my mug, my face here, we use a JPEG because it has all this. Oh, see how it goes from light green. You got all the, 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 the gradation. Really, JPEG does a superior job. Although, I want to let you know that you could use a GIF to make this, and you could use a JPEG to make this button up here. It uh, it's just that the JPEG to to get the same quality look, you're gonna get a much larger file size. Anyhow, 
and we'll, we'll get into this in more detail in the the uh, video dedicated to creating images for the web. What is PNG? PNG or ping, as some people call it, is another file format that is close to GIF in terms of how it packages up image information, in terms of how it compresses. PNG came later than GIF. PNG is much more advanced. It has much more advanced transparencies and has all kinds of other capabilities that GIF doesn't have. So what would you use, GIF or PNG? GIF, depending on the software that you use to output your images, tend to be slightly smaller than the equivalent PNG. So let's say you know, this uh, reading mat PNG is a six kilobyte file. As a GIF, it may be uh, a 5.5 kilobyte file. So it's really not such a huge thing. And most of the time, for any anything with the very smallest of images, like arrows and stuff, I usually use PNG. And for photographs, of course, I always use JPEG. Irregardless, in terms of file sizes, you know, it's always good to have very light pages that download quickly. But in today's internet, in today's web, where more and more people are getting high-speed internet, and you have, you know, sites where you have videos playing and stuff, to get too concerned about how many kilobytes your pages are is becoming more and more a thing of the past. Anyway, when we get into the video editing, excuse me, the image editing video, where I show you how to use uh, Photoshop to uh, prepare images for the web, uh, these type of things, I'll get into detail with regards to this. Anyway, we have our three images here, and I want you to note one last thing, and that's the names of these images. You notice I got reading dash man, sunset, and video dash wheel. First of all, you notice there's no space here. It's reading dash man, not reading space man. And the reason I do that is because it's uh, you never want to have spaces in your file names when it comes to any files related to websites, whether it be your page names, folder names, or image names. Keep that in mind. Another thing you should point I should point out is that I always like to use all lowercase in the naming because it's just cleaner as opposed to if I had if I had uppercase, uh, you know, reading man, it's it's actually cleaner to keep it all lowercase. Trust me, when you start dealing with tons of images and tons of pages in your website, you're going to thank me for that. And finally, I think uh, a very important thing I want to point out is that you should name your images with intelligent names that describe the images. So reading man. PNG sort of tells you what reading man, you know, what, what you're going to see in the photo. Sunset tells you what you're going to see in the photo, and so on. And the reason you do this is two reasons. Number one, when you're working with Dreamweaver, and here are these images now, or you're just looking at your images as files, you see how the names tell me something about the images without me having to go right-click and preview and browser. You know, preview browser Firefox. So, you know, Dreamweaver then preview the image. But since I gave it an intelligent name, I know what pretty much what the image is about. 